But let's consider you are standing in front of a lift and you are waiting for it to arrive and the door to open. And we shall call the random variable t the time you need to wait. Need to wait. And let me also give you a distribution for this. So f of t is going to be, and now it's going to be defined in this sort of piecewise way, and we'll see how this looks like graphically, then it will hopefully make sense. So for t between 0 and 1, the density is just equal to t. Then for times larger than 1 and up to 2 minutes, and we'll define the unit here in minutes, for up to 2 minutes the density function looks like 2 minus t and then 0 otherwise. So that means there is no way in our problem that you will ever have to wait longer than 2 minutes. So graphically what does that look like? So here is the density function. We said we are between 0 and 2 only. Let's lose a different uh, color. So below 0, we, we can't wait negative times. Above 2, there's also no probability. And between 0 and 2, basically first it's t. So here we have t, that means we are increasing by 45 degrees up to 1 and then 2 minus t. Now 2 minus t that means think about 2 as a uh, as an intercept here let's say that was 2 and then minus t but we're only using it on the interval between 1 and 2 so not on the interval between 0 and 1 because there that one is the relevant density function. So that looks the density function. So there's highest density around one minute and lower density for the lift to come even very quickly or for it to take very long. So now let's say we want to calculate the probability that we have to wait less or less than equal. It's a continuous random variable. We know it doesn't make a difference uh, than half a minute. So that means graphically we're thinking about this probability here indicated by this area. Okay, so well we have that uh, PDF so that means we can calculate this probability because that is the integral from 0 to 0.5 of our density function. And that is, in this case, fairly straightforward because the density function on that interval between 0 and 0 0.5 is this one here. So t dt. So that is fairly straightforward. That is just a half t squared because if you find the derivative of that, you'll get t. And really, and that will be useful for later. What you have to keep in mind is that really we also have a um, integration constant here, which if we calculate this interval doesn't matter because we added and subtracted in on both occasions. Okay, but that will become relevant later. So if we just calculate that, we'll now plug in our two values. So we have um, a half times 0 0.5 which is a half again squared and then we'll forget about the uh, constant of integration and then minus a half times zero squared. So that is of course just 1 over 8 or 0 0.125. Okay so First problem solved. We know that probability density function, and that means we can calculate a probability here. Well, of course, that one here, let me do that in a different color, is of course the same, and I can write that here. 
that one is the same as the CDF of 0 0.5. And we can just, uh, why do we do this here? Let's also have the CDF here. T up to two and zero has a maximum of one. So we know that the CDF will be zero here. It will be one here and it will do something in between. We know at 0 0.5, it will have a value of an eighth. An eighth is approximately here. So that point here is going to be on the CDF. Let's calculate another point on the CDF. Let's calculate and that well, let's make that green. Let's calculate 1.5. The probability that t is smaller or equal to 1.5. Now, of course, formally that's exactly follows exactly the same principle. f of t dt integral from 0 to 1.5. But now we are straddling, now we're going to here 1.5, 1.5. Now we are straddling these two different segments. Okay, so what we're going to do is we divide that integral into, so that should be equal, into two bits. One from here to here, and then another one from here to here. So that's the integral from 0 to 1 of f of t dt plus the integral of from 1 to 1.5 of f t dt. And now why that helps is the following. So we have this integral from 0 to 1. 0 to 1, it's just t dt. And then the integral from 1 to 1.5, we're going to use this segment here. So that is then the integral of 2 minus t dt. Okay, so perhaps you can already realize why we had to separate that. So that first integral is fairly straightforward. It's the same we had up here. That's just this one. So it's a half t squared and then from 0 to 0 0.5. And then plus, and now we're looking at this integral here. So if you think about it, we have this 2 here, that means really we have 2t here, and then minus t, well, that's just, again, the same pattern here. That's 1 over half t squared. So if you were to find the derivative of this, you would exactly end up with this. And again, in your mind, you can think of here being constants in here. So in here, we go from 1 to 1.5. So then we can just plug in these values here. So we get, first we plug in 0 0.5 into this integral. So we get a half times a half squared. That's the first one. Minus, now we plug in zero into this interval. So we get a half times zero squared. Then plus, now we go over to here, we start with the higher number, so we plug in 1.5, so we, we get 2 times 3 over 2, it's 1.5 minus a half times 1.5 squared. And now we plug in the 1 into this one, so minus 2 times 1 minus 1 squared over a half. Okay, so now you just have to plug it, calculate and get numbers here. You basically get 0 0.5. That's um, bum, bum, bum. Oh, I made a mistake. So let me just 
retrace that here and let me highlight where I made the mistake. Here that first integral goes from 0 to 1 but here I wrote 0 to 0 0.5 so that means I need to erase that and that should be 1 and then where that made a difference was that I uh, here I plugged in 0 0.5 but really I should have plugged in 1. Okay so here the 0 is correct but here I needed the 1 so let me um, erase that and this is just 1 squared. 1 squared and hence we get a half. Okay and that, I saw that in my notes so that that here is a half minus zero plus this bit here this is uh, 1.875 and then minus this bit which is 1.5 and if you calculate that we get 0 0.875 so that means this probability here is 1.875 so that's somewhere here a zero zero point 875 and that one here was 0.125 so and lastly I'm asking you what is the formal you know what is the actual function the CDF now we sort of know it already but there's a, a little detail that we need to that we need to fix okay we know that the CDF is basically the integral of this PDF. But now we have two different functions, two different segments. So we have to think about the CDF, let me use a different color here, in sort of two segments. All right, segment A and segment B. Now we know here and here these red points Papa. are really Im important. Papa, where so that was just a short interruption. So here, you know, here in this segment, we've been using this integral here. So it was a half t squared plus c. And in this segment here, we've been using this one. So here we had 2t minus a half t squared plus a constant. So now also you can see basically here that's a function and we know the shape from here but we don't know where exactly it is because we have that c but we can fix it. So let's think about segment a and segment b. So we know in segment a what we need a half t squared plus c and if we calculate that at the value t equals zero the value has to be zero because that point here we know has to be part of the cdf so if we calculate if we replace the t with a zero let's do it like this one half times zero squared plus c needs to be equal to zero. So from here we learn that c is actually equal to zero in that part. Now what about b? So here the integral is 2t minus a half t squared plus c and we want at the value t equals 2 we want that to give a value of 1. Okay, so let's plug in let's plug in the value 2. So we get 2 times 2 minus a half times 2 squared plus c has to be equal to 1. Now if you solve that so we get 4 minus 2 plus c equals 1. If you solve that you'll find that c is equal to negative 1. So that now gives us 
the integral. Okay, I will basically. So let's write it here. f of x, so it will be defined in segments again. And you could think of that one here. So to the left of zero, the density function will be zero. Okay, for t smaller than zero. Then it will be a half t squared for values of t between 0 and 1. Then it will be 2t minus a half t squared. And now we know what value that is. That should be negative 1 minus 1 for values of t between 1 and 2. And then the density function will be 1. Okay, it will be 1 for t larger than 2. So density function will look something like this. Okay, all of this information you can squeeze out of this density function with which we started. So what did we do? We defined a random variable, t, time, you need to wait for a lift. You were given this density function for that continuous random variable that allowed us to draw that density function, that allowed us to calculate probabilities for that density function. We had to integrate. And then that allowed us to actually calculate what the CDF is for that density function. But for both calculating these probabilities and the CDF, we needed to recognize that we had sort of a piecewise definition, depending on where in the domain we were.